بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين because of the restrictions going to be made less very soon it is obvious that in a worldwide system restrictions are only made easier and those people who have brought about the system are happy that plan 1 has been like done whatever their plan 1 is our country and the countries of the world taking loans was no like small thing that loan would never have been taken by any country in the world and no loan will ever come except with certain conditions after so the world will change now there's no denying it and it might change very fast the next few years what we will see will be a different world you call it the rising of an empire so i will mention certain verses of the quran when nabi ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam mufassirin mentioned the first empire of satanism the first satanic empire that was established was done by namrud and he enjoyed a very long period it was a period where idol worship was made to flourish and whoever stood up against it There was no way they could fight that the army of Namrud Ibrahim alayhi salam had the environment was so difficult that his own family was the idol worshippers that was their business to make the idols So Almighty Allah mentions the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam and how he showed a plan of action that when you will see a new world coming then how you must look at that new empire or that world and what duas you must make and what effort you must make Almighty Allah it is called Surah Ibrahim one ruku comes devoted towards how he made dua perhaps it was after he had taken his son and the mother of the son to the land of Makkah Mukarramah so when he is leaving them perhaps there at that moment or maybe it was after the Kaaba was built whenever it was Ibrahim alayhi salam makes this dua wa id qala Ibrahim rabbi ij'al hadha al-balada amina Almighty Allah says remember the time when Ibrahim alayhi salam made this dua that oh Allah make this land he was speaking about the land of Makkah Mukarramah but for me and you it is our land whichever land we live in hadha al-balada amina let it be a land of aman aman means ease peace there mustn't be war there mustn't be suffering there mustn't be difficulty what we are heading for towards is called vision 2030 vision 2030 is a new world a world where there will be no sickness there will be no war there will be no crime for me and you to imagine south africa without crime is like a dream perhaps south africa will see that vision no crime it is something everyone wants to work towards but sometimes that aman also comes together with satanism also it also comes together with bedini also sometimes when there is fear man is still scared of his iman and when there is no fear at that time everyone goes so fast with the flow so his first dua was oh allah make this land the land of aman and he added it immediately wa junubni wa baniya an na'bud al asnam but protect me and my children that we ever fall into the worship of idols idol worship wasn't the real thing it wasn't the idol it was a jinn behind the idol that's why he made it very clear in the next rabb Rabbi inna hunna adallalna kathiran min an-nas that these idols or the thing behind the idol it has taken so many people astray adallalna kathiran min an-nas fa man tabi'ani fa innahu minni so the ones who will follow me Allah they mind they were going to be very few as the world moves towards this vision at the moment it's only atheism satanism is still quiet in the world satanism will become very loud They will not be worshiping an idol like the Hindus do anymore. We'll see a new world, perhaps the world of the robot, but we will see Satanism loud. The words of Illuminati will be a very big word. And there'll be no one really worried about it because aman will be the main thing. Few will worry of this that Allah give us aman. We also want a world of no crime, no sickness. But it must not be at the expense of our or our children's iman. Wa junubni wa baniya Oh Allah protect me save me and save my children imagine who made the dua where ibrahim alayhi salam would ever have thought he can fall into idol worship for him to make that dua oh Allah save me 
it meant me and you shouldn't think that we'll never fall in it. He said, save me and my children. Wajnubni wa baniya. Then he showed a plan of action. When the world will open up and wealth will start falling and because of difficult days that people have seen in this last few and they will see perhaps for one, two years, everyone's aspiration will be now I must set up my business such, my world such, that in the future if ever something like this happens, I'm well set. The plan of action of Ibrahim a.s. was when you will find a new era. He said, Rabbi, Rabbana inni askantu min zurriyati biwadin ghayri di zar'in inda baytika al-muharram. It is called, you have to make now a choice between deen and dunya. The world will open up and everyone will be worried about establishing some plan, some business. But now where are you going to go and establish it? How South Africa was in the past, you had our Indians in one area, we had the Muslims in one area. It was a gift for the people of Islam. That people lived around the masjid. When this world is going to open very fast, it happened in many other countries of the world. Perhaps South Africa will even see it. That in the search now for sustenance, it's either man goes away from the masjid. Or man has to stay by the masjid, but there perhaps you will not get that amount which you're getting somewhere else. <coughs> to make a choice now between whether my deen will be given preference or my dunya. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Oh Allah, I put my progeny to live in a land. Inni askantu min zurriyati biwadin. It is a valley. Ghayri di zar'in. Nothing is growing in this valley. This is not the place to come and live. I only brought them here in the baytik al-muharram. I brought them so they could be close to your house. Liyuqimu salata Oh Allah, so that they could be the people establishing the salah. He showed what he gave preference to. But they'll always be worried that. What about the world? What about the sustenance? What about the rosy? So he showed that I left it in the hands of Allah. I did, I gave preference to the deen. And I said, Oh Allah, فَجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِّنَ النَّاسِ تَحْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَارْزُقْهُمْ مِّنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ That is the nature of man. He gets happy when there are people around him. And when there's a lot of sustenance coming towards him. He said, Oh Allah, I ask you to do that. My effort was to bring my family in into an environment of deen. I'll have to go and search in the world, alhamdulillah, in South Africa, to a great extent we got it. But it might change, it's already been changing. Every now and then you hear of someone moving out. And when you ask, is there a masjid in that area? Ask, is there a madrasa in that area? Then he will always say, my child has weekly madrasa, once a week madrasa, from what we enjoyed once upon a time, to what we ended off. Once upon a time, the fight in South Africa was, must there be madrasa on Saturday? Allah, do not make it happen. We saw it in other countries, where day it is, madrasa is on Saturday. There's only madrasa on Saturday. The rest of the day was just the whole week, working, working, working. Now the person said, hey, my deen also, my child needs to learn little Quran. He said, I gave preference to dunya, to deen. And I said, oh Allah, you send the dunya for them. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ Man's nature is, رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ تَعْلَمُ مَا نُخْفِي وَمَا نُعْلِن What a dua. He said, Oh Allah, you know our inside also. He spoke on behalf of the world. Our inside also, we worry a lot of our world. That is our inside. He said, Allah, we can't hide anything from you. We also want the top world. But our physical effort will be bring them in an environment of deen. I will look where a masjid is and I will say we live here. Even if it means I have to travel for my work. I will say, I'm bringing them, there's a madrasa in this area. Let's come and live here. This world is going to change. It's going to change very fast. This is the first practical method Ibrahim a.s. taught for man's deen to be protected, not now just from Bedini, but from atheism and Satanism. We have met those families that he's saying, my daughter, my son, do not believe in this Islam anymore. But the father is reading Quran. He did nothing against them. The only thing he never gave them, the environment he once upon a time enjoyed. They lost their entire deen. Atheism and Satanism is the call of the day. Then Ibrahim a.s. taught us how to make dua and Ramadan is the time for dua. In our dua we have three things we worry about. One is our dunya, one is our deen and one is the akhirah, meaning results. Because on that day, on the day of Qiyamah, you get it in your right hand and everything is open. 
and it comes in the left hand, then everything is gone. In this world, man has two worries. And in Ramadan, we're going to make dua for both. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught a Sahabi radiallahu and the narration comes in Muslim. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to go visit him. He was very sick. He had become, they say, like the baby, like the chick. Weak. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, perhaps you asked for something. You made a dua. What has brought your condition as? He said, I asked Almighty Allah that, O oh Allah, whatever punishment I am deserving of on the year, in the year after, can you give it to me now in this world? So that there I am free. Nabi Islam said, by the qasam of Allah, you will not manage. You will not manage in this world. He said, why don't you make this dua? Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. That, O oh Allah, give me the best of this world. Wa fil akhirati hasana. And also the best day. Wa qina adab al nar. Save me from the punishment of Jahannam. Then he made dua for the Sahabi and the Sahabi got better. What a dua he taught. Quran mentioned this dua. Ibrahim alayhi salam taught on that same pattern. But he taught it slightly different. One was regarding dunya, one of the best duas which Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam made, mentioned. He said, Afdalu dua alhamdulillah. The best dua man can make is, O oh Allah, I thank you. Especially for our worldly issues. Ibrahim alayhi salam for the world, physical, what we call zahiri, favors of Almighty Allah. Ibrahim alayhi salam never have a house like ours. Later on, Ismail alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam will go visit the wife of Ismail alayhi salam. He will ask, how are things? She doesn't know it's the father of her husband. She doesn't know it's Ibrahim alayhi salam. The wife complains. Ibrahim alayhi salam is on his animal. He doesn't even get off. He just asks her how she complains. He leaves a message. That say to your husband when he comes home, a stranger came, he gave salams, and he said, you must change your doorstep. What was meant by this here was that this wife, the one who greets, this is not the best. Why? She never have the quality of shukar of things of this world. But why she complained? It was not an easy life. Ibrahim alayhi salam taught the world this, that everyone can look in their life and they will see so many favors of Almighty Allah which will make them blind to the difficulties. And if you don't want to, everyone got difficulties in life. Ibrahim alayhi salam started his dua, Alhamdulillah alladhi wahabali ala al-kibari Ismail wa Ishaq inna rabbi la sami'u dua He started his dua with Alhamdulillah that oh Allah in my old age how can I ever thank you at a time when I never thought I'll get a son you gave me Ismail I never thought I'll get a son you gave me Ishaq what and what you gave me inna rabbi la sami'u dua how you listen to my duas in exp- expressing thanks to the favors that Allah gave us now. That is dua because Allah promised لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ It is a dua, our world will get better. The second is whoever looks at the favors of Allah will never fall into depression. No matter how difficult times come, he will always say, Allah gave me so much. Look at our condition. In these days, what we call very difficult days for the country, everyone look. Either the person will be complaining, hey, I got no maid. Or he can say, Alhamdulillah, Allah never made me to be a maid. I was not made. That's so much my favors of my Allah, I'm waiting for my servant to come. That poor servant is waiting, will the money of the month come? Will I manage to pay my rent? This person got no worry for that. This person is worrying, I couldn't go for my umrah this year. That person is worrying, I don't know if I'll have something to eat tonight. If man's eye is on the favors of Allah, you will pick up a lot of favors. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, what a favor. How my Allah listens to my dua. In that there was further dua for dunya. Because the greatest dua is to thank Almighty Allah. Thereafter it's called, after looking at our zahiri, the favors Allah gave us, the outside, our house, our car, our families, the clothing we wear, we got lot. Then there is something called batini favors. That we don't know. It's called spiritual favors. That's where we go exert ourselves in Ramadan. He said, Rabbi j'alni muqeem as-salah wa min dhurriyati. Oh Allah, what lovely children you gave me. Look at the outside. The children of a Nabi will be the most handsome. Ismail and Ishaq alayhi salam. But that batini, he said, Oh Allah, how wonderful the outside of my children is. Can you make the inside also so wonderful? He said, Allah, allow me and my children to become of the people who establish dua. 
رب جعلني مقيم الصلاة ومن ذريتي ربنا وتقبل دعاء he said in rabbi la sami'u du'a oh my allah listens to my du'a when it came to batini and you say oh allah please accept this du'a of mine make my inside make my inside because our outside allah has given all of us just make shukr on our outside and it will get even better as for our inside no one knows whether i'm dying with nifaq i'm dying with kufr whether i'm going with iman or not the attacks of the devil is not a small attack And then he made his final dua, which is called the year after. Rabbi ghfirli wa li walidiya. O Allah, on that day, forgive me, forgive my fathers. Rabbi ghfirli wa li walidiya. Wa lil mu'minin yawm yaqoom al hisab. Everything happens on that day. What a unique way he taught us. We are going to see a new world. In this new world, one he taught us that waking, worrying about aman, but let aman, peace, not come to us at the expense of our iman. وَجْنُبْنِي وَبَنِيَّ O Allah, save me and my children from ever falling falling into the worship. He said, idols, it means the worship of the devil. Plan of action is that whenever, whatever happens in the world, I will always look for the environment of deen for my children. Even if it means the dunya won't come so much. And I will say, Allah, I went towards deen, you send the dunya for them. And in my dua, I will look after my dunya by thinking how much Allah gave me Thanking Allah for that and knowing Allah promised you thank me what I gave you, I'll give you even more. Then for my deen, meaning that which I can't see, there I will beg Allah. I will beg Allah. That oh Allah put barakah in it. Oh Allah put blessings in it. You gave me wonderful children. Let them not fall into drugs. Let them not fall into porn. Let them not go into secret societies. Oh Allah for this world, let them not lose their iman and to make for ourselves also. And the finally is qiyamah is coming. This world is only a 60-70 year world. The real world is the grave. The real world is standing on front, in front of Allah. It is cro- crossing the sirat. There is many, many years to still come. Remember that world in your du'as. The month of Ramadan is for two things. One is Quran. One is du'a. Allah tabarak ta'ala grant us that in Ramadan we read a lot of Quran and we make a lot of du'a for our protection, protection of our families, protection for the world. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah.